significant progress towards Flight 7, which marked the first test of the V2 variant. Important escalations are underway, signaling many transformations to come. Remarkably, prior to the departure of this flight, the next V2 prototype was launched, showcasing many distinctive features. No doubt, the FAA continues to play a vital role in facilitating their operations. Nevertheless, SpaceX can remain confident that favorable developments are imminent following congressional advocacy. Join us as we delve deeper into today's NR Studio episode. After a robust static fire test with the B-14 just 20 days after Flight 6, the next steps proceeded without delay. On the morning of December 10th, the B-14 was carefully lowered from the launch pad and transported to the production facility known as Mega Bay. After a check of its systems, which include the engine, grid fin, and shine, among others, will be performed. Next, the installation of the hot staging ring will be carried out. Once these procedures are complete, the B-14 will reassemble at the launch site for the purpose of conducting integration testing. In the meantime, SpaceX is ready to conduct a static fire test with the S-33 in the near future, likely this weekend or in the coming week. Next, the S-33 will undergo checks before being transported to the launch site for testing alongside the B-14. The momentum is currently encouraging for the scheduled January 11th launch, and there is potential for an earlier deployment if SpaceX decides to arrange a surprise. The upcoming flight has not received any official updates. However, modifications are anticipated. The S-33 will represent the first V2 prototype to feature significant modifications to the cowling system and heat shield. The upcoming flight landing may present greater challenges in demonstrating the efficacy of these improvements. Historically, SpaceX has opted to eliminate the heat shield and adopt a more pronounced landing angle. It is anticipated that these challenges will be amplified in the upcoming flight. The V2 will feature an enlarged fuel tank and an elevated payload door strategically designed to increase the fuel-to-mass ratio. In the context of early missions featuring minimal payloads, the utilization of additional fuel could be beneficial for alternative functions, such as improving engine performance or enabling the operation of multiple engines simultaneously in the space environment. This will serve as a crucial evaluation for forthcoming missions. Concerning the payload, subsequent to Mr. with Bananas' inaugural appearance as the premier Starship passenger on the inaugural V-2 flight, we can expect a more substantial second passenger for the upcoming Coming journey. What are your thoughts on the forthcoming payload? Personally, I suspect it could possibly involve a Mrs. Citrullus Lanatus. Who can say for certain? Please contribute your insights or forecasts in the comments section below. An additional enhancement, which may not be present in Flight 7, pertains to the lifting point. In S-33 and subsequent V-2 models, the mechanism will transition to the next payload bay rather than merely positioning itself beneath the forward flaps. This modification guarantees enhanced equilibrium for sustained usage, particularly given that the newly positioned flaps are ill-suited for the chopstick connection. The efficacy of this enhancement will be assessed in upcoming V-2 flights. Upon reviewing Starbase, it appears that the forthcoming mission will replicate the recovery attempt from Flight 5, which was ultimately aborted during Flight 6. This mission necessitates meticulous preparation of both the engine and grid fin, tasks currently underway by SpaceX with B-14. The communication system, encompassing both the booster and catching mechanisms, functions reliably to prevent a recurrence of the issues encountered during the prior flight. Broadly speaking, significant modifications are anticipated in Flight 7, the inaugural flight of the V-2. All efforts are directed towards the forthcoming full landing flight, which will mark the inaugural deployment of the new version. In this operation, the Super Heavy booster will be retrieved by the Mechazilla arm, while the spacecraft will execute a controlled vertical landing. This will be crucial for successfully navigating both subsequent stages. Do you observe any alterations that have not been noted? Kindly include them and engage in discourse in the comments section below. Below. We encourage you to like and subscribe to our channel in order to stay informed about SpaceX's ongoing development journey. The anticipation is tangible as we approach this groundbreaking launch. Remain attentive, for SpaceX is poised to once again revolutionize the future of space exploration. As we monitor the advancements of Flight 7, another unveiling of a V-2 prototype has emerged. This represents the inaugural depiction of the S-35's nose cone. In a manner akin to earlier prototypes, the S-35 has entered the high bay for positioning within the payload section prior to its transport to Megabi 2 for complete assembly. Indeed, the depiction of the S-35 has previously been captured. However, at that juncture, it merely existed as a silhouette within the Star Factory. The most recent close-up image unveils a myriad of intriguing details. In general, it preserves the fundamental attributes of the preceding two V-2 iterations, albeit with modifications to the flap and heat shield. This time, however, it appears that SpaceX has successfully accomplished all necessary tasks.
masks. In contrast to the S33 nose cone, which was incomplete upon its initial introduction, it made its debut unrefined. Upon closer examination, it becomes apparent that the edges of the flap have been meticulously installed with remarkable uniformity, particularly the edge nearest to the vessel's combat zone, convergence point. In contrast to the V1, the flap is now entirely encased in tiles, thereby enhancing its safety during flight. Moreover, the advancements in the joining system have resulted in the flap being nearly seamlessly integrated with the ship, thereby significantly reducing reducing the re-entry impact on the vulnerable joining point, which sustained considerable damage during Flight 4. This provides merely a cursory glimpse of the S-35, as only a segment of the entire image is presented. It is likely that additional compelling transformations exist, and we must await further elucidation to acquire a comprehensive understanding. The S-33 project witnessed a duration of 42 days from the initial emergence of the first component to the culmination of the complete stack. The unveiling of the nose cone on December 10th suggests that we can and anticipate the debut of the complete S-35 prototype by the end of January. Per the outline strategy, the S-35 is designated for utilization in Flight 9 to integrate with the B-16. Flight 7 is poised to execute the landing of the vessel upon the ocean surface. While there is a collective anticipation for Flight 8 to yield significant returns, the ultimate outcome is contingent upon the performance of Flight 7. In the interim, I believe that Flight 9 will undoubtedly serve as a mission to capture the vessel. This illustrates the distinguished status of the S-35. The preparations must be executed with meticulous precision to guarantee a successful mission that propels SpaceX towards achieving full reusability. At present, the B-16 components are nearly entirely assembled, suggesting they are likely stored within the megabay. As advancements in both hardware continue, flight operations are occurring with increasing frequency. This further solidifies the objective of achieving 25 flights in the upcoming year. The forthcoming missions are genuinely thrilling, and with ongoing advancements in both hardware and testing, SpaceX is evidently demonstrating its dedication to expanding the frontiers of space exploration. As we closely monitor advancements, each stride propels us toward a future characterized by increased frequency and reliability of space missions. This unwavering quest for advancement and innovation is precisely what renders SpaceX's journey so captivating to observe. However, when discussing single or long-term launch strategies, it is imperative to acknowledge the FAA's role. In November, the agency revealed its initiative to form the space-related aerospace rulemaking committee, designated as SPARC, with the objective of evaluating and restructuring the process for securing launch and re-entry approvals. Nonetheless, definitive measures have still to be implemented. Members of Congress are advocating for reforms to enhance efficiency and accelerate the FAA's procedural framework. On December 6, Representative Sam Graves, the chair of the House Transportation Committee, along with Representative Rob Woodman, dispatched a letter to FAA Administrator Michael Whitaker. They referenced the pressing demands of the United States aerospace industry alongside the expansion of the commercial sector. They urge the FAA to implement all measures short of rulemaking to expedite the licensing process under Part 450, which has been in effect since 2021. These regulations are imposing considerable delays and challenges for enterprises, particularly for those with regular launch schedules such as SpaceX. The letter highlighted that this time frame does not account for the months and frequently years of pre-application review that result in significant delays for companies pursuing a launch and re-entry license. These delays have a direct bearing on the United States' stature in space exploration and our strategic rivalry with an increasing array of adversarial nations intent on undermining our space capabilities while bolstering their own. Pre-application consultation has emerged as a labor-intensive phase, often lasting up to 180 days, with no guarantee that a company will ultimately be licensed. On December 5th, the Federal Aviation Administration convened a newly formed committee session. Their statements continued to prioritize expeditious licensing protecting the public welfare, and other considerations. However, progress appears to be slow. The members of Congress emphasized the need for the FAA to act immediately, urging that any actions, short of formal rulemaking, that could mitigate Part 450 regulatory deficiencies be implemented before necessary regulatory revisions are made, thereby preventing the commercial space industry from experiencing protracted delays in obtaining relief. Many others have also emphasized the need for the FAA to expedite progress in the coming months. In short, Spark is poised to provide significant benefits to the company, given that its 24-member roster includes many representatives from leading private companies. This is a positive development for SpaceX. In the near term, the transition to V2 makes the licensing landscape ambiguous. In the future, initiatives such as the 25 star-based flights and the 44 flights to Florida will require a more expedited approval process. We will observe the impact of these initiatives on Starship, starting with Flight 7 and continuing through 2025. Congressional 
initiatives highlight the need to modernize and optimize the regulatory framework to facilitate rapid advances in aerospace innovation. Spark brings together specialists to address bureaucratic hurdles with the goal of increasing the efficiency and predictability of the permitting process. This will benefit companies like SpaceX, who are at the forefront of space exploration. As SpaceX prepares for its upcoming V2 launch, the industry remains vigilant about the evolving regulatory landscape. Increased launch frequency coupled with reduced approval lead times could substantially improve SpaceX operational capabilities and contribute to maintaining U.S. aerospace supremacy. Leadership in space exploration, with 25 flights scheduled from Starbase and 44 from Florida, the FAA faces increasing pressure to implement timely reforms. In short, Despite ongoing challenges, the initiatives undertaken by Congress and Spark present a hopeful trajectory for the future. The success of these initiatives will be instrumental in enabling the commercial space industry to thrive and innovate, thereby facilitating advances in space exploration. Stay tuned as we monitor this progress and how it impacts SpaceX's trajectory toward full reusability. That concludes today's episode. See you next time.